one of the mentors study MRCOG, branch of study medic team. In this short video, I would like to emphasize on the important as well as some of the confusing topics which are repeatedly asked like recalls in part 1 MRCOG examination. So this video can be used as a revision before your exam. So basically it's the basics then we have to repeat those what we have studied, revise and then try to recall. So starting with mechanism of action which is one of the confusing aspects in the whole of pharmacology. Of all the drugs which are used in pregnancy and lactation, the commonly asked questions are from antibiotics, antihypertensives, antifungal, few of the antifungal drugs, then uh, from the contraceptives as well as other antimicrobial drugs. So now coming down to the antibiotics, broadly the mechanism of action can be easily remembered by understanding the classification of the drug. So we all know there are lots of uh, antibiotic classification but there are only few drugs which cannot be given during pregnancy and lactation. So starting from amnoglycosides, amnoglycosides are antibiotics like uh, streptomycin, gendamycin which are contraindicated in pregnancy especially from the second trimester of pregnancy onwards because it has got adverse effects on the renal system of the fetus causing renal dysgenesis, polygamnios and subsequently causing a sequence like pulmonary hypoplasia. So amnoglycosides, a mechanism of action is basically it inhibits the protein synthesis by binding with the 30S ribosomal subunit of the protein. And the next group cephalosporins. Cephalosporins have got different generations and main mechanism of action is by inhibiting the cell wall synthesis and it has got cross sensitivity reactions with penicillins. So just remember when penicillin allergy is there not all cases of uh, penicillin allergy cases cephalosporin can be considered as a drug of choice especially if it is severe penicillin allergy so the usually used cephalosporins include ceftriaxone cefpodoxine cefotaxim and others coming to the tetracycline so tetracycline includes tetracycline as well as doxycycline Do uh, mainly it acts by inhibiting the protein synthesis and that too it acts by binding with the 30S ribosomal subunit of the protein. Coming to penicillins, penicillins are usually used as a first line antibiotic drug during pregnancy because it is time tested to be safe in pregnancy without any tetragenicity but uh, we have to be cautious about the allergic reactions in some women. It acts by inhibiting the cell wall synthesis. Uh, basically, it uh, prevents the cross-linking of the peptidoglycans by acting on the transpeptidase. Coming to sulfonamides, it is one of the drugs which are used only as a second line of third line of antibiotic. It mainly acts by inhibiting the folate synthesis, thus inhibits the DNA synthesis. It is to be avoided, uh, especially during the third trimester of pregnancy, because reports are there that it can cause carnitrix of the newborn if used in the third trimester of pregnancy. Fluoroquinolones, mainly including ciprofloxacin or floxacin, especially for the respiratory symptoms, those are to be avoided or contraindicated in pregnancy as uh, it is seen to have teratogenic effects on the fetus, especially on the teeth as well as bone. And it acts by inhibiting the DNA replication. Macrolides. Macrolides also acts by inhibiting the protein synthesis by binding with the 50S ribosomal subunit. It includes mainly erythromycin as well as azithromycin. Carbipenems, which are very higher antibiotics. Imipenem uh, is one of the drugs which is included in the carbipenem group of antibiotics. It acts by inhibiting the cell wall synthesis similar to the penicillins as well as the cephalosporins. Lincosamides that is mainly including the clindamycin which can be given during pregnancy if required it acts by inhibiting the protein synthesis by binding with the 50s ribosomal subunit glycopeptides also acts by inhibiting the cell wall synthesis so just to have a mnemonic malt means macrolides aminoglycosides lincosamides and tetracycline acts by inhibiting the protein synthesis
Coming to antihypertensives, the main antihypertensives which are used in pregnancy, the first line is labetalol, then alpha methyl topa, nifedipine, and for severe hypertensive crisis, we can use hydrolacin, sodium nitroprusside, as well as IV labetalol, and magnesium sulfate. Of course, we use for the prevention of uh, um, eclampsia or in cases of severe preeclampsia. So labetalol is a non-selective, uh, both alpha as well as beta blocker and it is considered to be the first line antihypertensive during pregnancy according to the NICE guidelines. Alpha methyl topa is a centrally acting alpha 2 agonist drug. Uh, Hydrolysin it is a direct arterial vasodilator it is a smooth muscle relaxant. Nifedipin is a calcium channel blocker it is a dihydropyridin calcium channel blocker and um, Magnesium sulfate which is used for the prevention of eclampsia is basically it is an anti-convulsant along with an anti-tocolytic uh, effect. The anti-convulsant effect is by blocking the NMDA receptors in the brain. So coming to the antiretroviral drugs which is also an important topic for the part 1 MRCOG pharma part. Uh, mainly we need to know the classification and what all drugs are included within each classification so as we all know once a hiv virus it is a rna virus enters into the cell there will be uncoating and it is acted upon by the reverse transcriptase enzyme for a dna synthesis integrated to the host dna and produces the precursor protein and variants mature so at different levels the drugs have been synthesized to inhibit the further replication of the HIV virus. So first of all, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors are there. That includes mainly abacavir, lamivudine, cytovudine, tenofovir, which are the main antiretroviral drugs which are used in pregnancy. The non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors include mainly nevirapine, efavirenz, dapivirin, all these drugs. There is also a nucleoside analog reverse transcript translocation inhibitor which is not much used in pregnancy is it is islet travel the entry inhibitors include enfuvertide as well as maraviroc integrate in integrase inhibitors are raltigravir dolutigravir raltigravir as an integrase inhibitor mechanism of action is one of the recall question also sidovudine belongs to which class of drug is a recall question it is nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor and daltigravir, raltigravir is an integrase inhibitor. So now coming to about the protease inhibitors, they are all this VIRS, F-E-I-R, that is intinavir, topinavir, saquinavir, darivnavir, all this VIRS. So those are all protease inhibitors. So reverse transcriptase inhibitors into nucleoside, non-nucleoside, entry inhibitors, integrase, integrase inhibitors and protease inhibitors. Coming to anticoagulation, mainly we have got unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, then the oral anticoagulant, uh, which is the warfarin, and the new oral anticoagulants which are available, the new direct anticoagulants which are available are the rivaroxaban, epic 7, as well as dabigatron and fondaparinox. So, the unfractionated heparin mainly it activates the antithrombin that is factor 2 and forms a complex uh, with the activated serine protease coagulation factors which uh, in turn inactivates a factor 2 as well as the 10 and even the 9 as well as 11 also while the low molecular weight heparin has got more action that it mainly inactivates a factor 10 it prevents activation of factor 10a uh, warfarin warfarin its precursor is kumarin it's a kumarin derivative and uh, warfarin mainly it has got action on both the intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathway of coagulation cascade and it mainly inhibits the vitamin K epoxide reductase enzyme preventing the activation of the vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. Another recall which uh, has been used is a dabigatrin. So it, dabigatrin mainly it uh, binds with the thrombin and prevents further activation of the coagulation cascade. The anti-emetic drugs have also been uh, used, uh, have been asked previously. So the main classification goes like antihistamine, anticholinergic drugs include mainly cyclicin, then meclizin, 
D2 that is dopamine two receptor antagonist are the metoclopramide chlorpromazine prochlorpyrazine uh, which includes the first line as well as the second line antiemetic drugs the serotonin 5HT3 receptor antagonist are the ondansetron danis granisetron and all those cetron drugs which are usually used mainly the emiset or the ondansetron and neurokinin 1 receptor antagonist is the apripitent and other drugs so mainly we need to know about the dopamine d2 receptor antagonist which includes the metoclopramide clopromazine prochlorpyrazine and uh, serotonin receptor antagonist like the ondansetron of course the uh, cyclin it is an antihistamine anticholinergic so broad classification of anti cancer agents uh sometimes they can ask like methotrexate belongs to which class of and chemotherapeutic drug and uh, similar questions can be asked like anti alkylating agents are there include cyclophosphamide iphosphamide and platinum coordinators includes this platin carboplatin oxaliplatin anti metabolite drugs includes methotrexate microtubule damaging agents are vincristin vinblastin paclitaxel docetaxel so it is one of the drug where they can ask vinblastin or vincristin has got mechanism of action basically it inhibits or prevents some microtubule aggregation topoisomerase 2 inhibitor etoposide topoisomerase 1 inhibitor is topotecan antibiotic and uh, chemotherapeutic drugs are actinomycin d doxorubicin danorubicin mitomycin c and other drugs of course coming to contraception that's also one of the favorite area in part 1 mrcog so basically they ask about the mechanism of action like uh, the combined hormonal com- hormonal contraceptive medications either it's a pill or an implant or a ring main mechanism of action is by inhibition of ovulation of course the progesterone component uh, causes a hostile environment of the endometrium and increases the thickness of the cervical mucus and also decreases the fallopian tube peristalsis but mainly it is by inhibiting the ovulation and uh, the main side effect of the combined hormonal contraception is irregular bleeding also for the other progesterone contraceptive and the liver nonorgestrel intrauterine system it has got both contraceptive as well as non contraceptive benefits uh, like it can be used in abnormal uterine bleeding for the t- management of endometrial hyperplasia without atypia and so on endometriosis as well uh, mainly it causes uh, inhibition of ovulation but also has got a local foreign body inflammatory reaction thinning of the endometrium increasing the cervical mucus thickness and inhibits the endometrial prostaglandin synthesis the liver nonorgestrel has got a content uh, of around 52 mg and releases an around 20 micrograms of the liver nonorgestrel daily it is also one of the recall question and it can be used up to 5 days progesterone only pills or injection like dipor methoxy progesterone acetate also inhibits ovulation and along with other progesterone effects the dmp or the dipor methoxy progesterone acetate has to be given every 12 weeks and norethestrone acetate injection has to be given every 8 weeks these are all recall questions so now classification of the uh, progesterones according to generation first generation includes norethestrone norgestrel and second generation levonorgestrel it's a recall question third generation is norgestimate disorgestrel as well as fourth generation is the trosperinone the emergency contraceptive method sometimes they can give simple scenarios to ask about the um, which um, ec has to be preferred or maybe the mechanism of action so the most effective emergency contraceptive method is a intrauterine copper device it uh, is a single insertion it can be inserted even up to 5 days after the unprotected sexual intercourse and uh, combined or uh, estrogen progesterone pills are available that can also be used up to 5 days then progesterone only regimen which is a levonorgestrel one tablet 1.5 mg of levonorgestrel but it can be used only up to 72 hours or 3 days but in case of enzyme inducing medications intake are there the dosage has to be double levonorgestrel 3 mg has to be given as the ec and uh, another drug which is available for the EC or the emergency contraception is a uliprostal acetate it is a selective progesterone receptor modulator a single dose of 30 mg is given it is 
uh, it has got an uh, anti progesterone effect and it can be given up to 5 days coming to about the teratogenic effects so anti epileptic drugs is a well known culprit to cause teratogenesis of the anti epileptic drugs the least teratogenic effect is for the lamotrigine and levetiracetam hence they are preferred during pregnancy then carbamazepine oxcarbazepine phenytoin phenobarbital topiramate and maximum teratogenicity is for valproate so valproate means it causes neural tube defects also it can cause cardiac anomalies and the clefts and neurodevelopmental delay phenytoin fetal hydantoin syndrome in form of craniofacial malformations and growth retardation developmental delay cardiac anomalies clefts as well as fingernail hypoplasia carbamazepine oxcarbazepine can cause cleft lip cleft palate as well as uh, he can cause neural tube defects phenobarbital clefts and cardiac anomalies urinary tract malformations lamotrigine is found to be safe but a theoretical risk of increased risk of clefts topiramate uh, is known to cause clefts and levetiracetam theoretical risk of skeletal abnormalities and growth restriction but of these the safest are the levetiracetam and lamotrigine aminoglycosides to be prevented from second trimester of pregnancy onwards and uh, also the streptomycin can cause autotoxicity and even nephrotoxicity also tetracyclines will cause uh, discoloration of the teeth as well as bone deformities mainly the yellowish discoloration sulfonamides can cause neonatal jaundice and kernicterus especially given the third trimester of pregnancy chloramphenicol causes gray baby syndrome and chlor quinolones like superfloxacin cause bone and cartilage damage corticosteroids or a higher dosage for a longer term can cause adrenal atrophy and growth retardation it can cause immunosuppression of the newborns propranolol can cause growth restriction bradycardia neonatal hypoglycemia as well as fetal distress thalidomide uh, has been used earlier much much earlier for use of as an antiemetic but now it is uh, under category x drug as it has been found to, to cause effects like focomelia and multiple defects anti cancer drugs can cause different effects like methotrexate because it is an anti folate drug like inhibits dna synthesis cause hydrocephalus multiple defects cleft palate and lip androgens uh, it can cause virilization limb uh, defects as well as esophageal and cardiac defects progestins can cause virilization of female fetus stilbestrol cause vaginal carcinoma in teenage of female offspring and warfarin if given at a high dosage especially more than 5 mg per day for a long term especially during the teratogenesis period between 6 weeks to 12 weeks can cause nasal bone hypoplasia as well as chondrodysplasia punctatia stippling epiphysis growth retardation eye and hand defects alcohol can cause low iq baby growth retardation and fetal alcohol syndrome ac inhibitors cause mainly renal hypoplasia growth restriction oligamnios lithium it's specific early it is associated with the fetal cardiac anomaly that is epstein's anomaly also it can cause uh, other uh, abnormalities and the thyroid drugs it can cause fetal goiter and hypothyroidism especially carbamazole uh is known to cause eclesia cutis indomethacin aspirin the other nsaids can cause uh, premature closure of ductus arteriosus especially if given in the late second and third trimester isotretinoin can cause craniofacial heart as well as cns defects so methimazole i have as i've mentioned it can cause eclesia cutis and other abnormalities the drugs which are contraindicated in pregnancy are sulfonamides aminoglycosides fluoroquinolones erythromycin metronidazole tetracyclines ribavirin griseofulvin as well as chloramphenicol so just to have a uh, um, recall question that is terbinafen it was you asked once to, about the mechanism of action so it mainly uh, inhibits a squalene epoxide enzyme so other area which has been asked uh, is about the local anesthetic uh, preparations mainly it is a lidocaine so if used with adrenaline or without adrenaline so if used with adrenaline the maximum dosage that is the safest limit has to be calculated according to weight of the patient 
and that is around 3 to 5 mg per kg and if it is that is without adrenaline so without adrenaline lidocaine dosage is 3 to 5 mg per kg and with adrenaline the maximum dosage is 7 mg per kg so the weight of the patient also usually will be given and we need to calculate it according to the weight so there are certain uh, factors which affect the placental transfer of the drug from maternal to fetal and it has been seen that there is uh, factors are the molecular weight charge of molecule lipid solubility the ph uh, as well as the placental efflux binding protein type as well as free drug fraction so there is an increased transfer if there is a small size like less than 1000 molecular weight delta if it is uncharged molecule if it is lipophilic and uh, if the ph of the drug has it has got a higher proportion of unionized drug in the maternal plasma that is non ionization helps in increased uh, maternal transfer and if the placental efflux transporter proteins are absent binding protein type is lower binding affinity for albumin and if there is a high free drug fraction so these are all about the uh, nutshell of the different uh, difficult topics or maybe the confusing topics which are repeatedly asked for the part 1 MRCOG examination so basically the mechanism of action of the drugs of the antibiotics antifungal medications antihypertensives antiretroviral medications contraceptives teratogenic effects of the contraindicated medications during pregnancy lactation and then the side effects of the medications and uh, also the biologics like infliximab to be avoided during the third trimester because it causes immunosuppression and if it is given then we need to avoid live vaccines for the newborn in the first six months of life also there has been uh, questions asked about uh, the mechanism of action of the uh, the eutrotronics which can be given like oxytocin then the other medications like uh, carboprost uh, misoprostol these medications the different dosages all those have also been used repeatedly in the previous recall uh, so i wish you all a very best so just keep revising and then wishing you all the best so that you all will come out with flying colors thank you